Before we start our topic today, please smash the like button and subscribe to help the channel grow. And thanks for your support. Why dogs and humans love each other more than anyone else? You speak dog better than you think you do. You may not be fluent, that would require actually being a dog. But if you went to live in a dog's only world, you'd be pretty good at understanding what they're saying. You can tell a nervous yip from a menacing growl, a bark that says hello from a bark that says get lost. You can read the body language that says happy, that says sad, that says tired, that says scared, that says please, please, please play with me right now. Think that's not a big deal? Then answer this, what does a happy bird look like? A sad lion? You don't know, but dog talk you get. And as with your first human language, you didn't even have to try to learn it. You grew up in a world in which dogs are everywhere, and simply came to understand them. That, by itself, says something about the bond that humans and dogs share. We live with cats, we work with horses, we hire cows for their milk and chickens for their eggs and pay them with food, unless we kill them and eat them instead. Our lives are entangled with those of other species, but we could disentangle if we wanted. With do dogs, things are different. Our world and their world swirled together long ago like two different shades of paint. Once you've achieved a commingled orange, you're never going back to red and yellow. But why is that? It's not enough to say that the relationship is symbiotic, that dogs hunt for us and herd for us, and we keep them warm and fed in return. Sharks and remra fish struck a similarly symbiotic deal, with the remra cleaning parasites from the shark's skin and getting to help itself to scraps from the shark's kills as its pay. That underwater deal is entirely transactional, love plays no part. Humans and dogs, by contrast, adore each other. The relationship began, well, nobody knows exactly when it began. The earliest remains of humans and dogs interred together date to 14,000 years ago, but there are some unconfirmed finds that are said to be more than twice as old. The larger point is the meaning of the discoveries, we lived with dogs and then chose to be buried with them. Imagine that. It was only by the tiniest bit of genetic chance that our cross-species union was forged at all. Dogs and wolves share 99.9% .9 of their mitochondrial DNA, the DNA that's passed down by the mother alone, which makes the two species nearly indistinguishable. But elsewhere in the genome, there are a few genetic scraps that make a powerful difference. On chromosome 6 in particular, investigators have found three genes that code for hypersociability, and they are in the same spot as similar genes linked to similar sweetness in humans. Our ancestors didn't know what genes were many millennia ago, but they did know that every now and then, one or two of the mid-sized scavengers with the long muzzles that came nosing around their campfires would gaze at them with a certain attentiveness, a certain loving neediness, and that it was awfully hard to resist them. So they welcomed those few in from the cold, and eventually came to, ca to call them dogs, while the animals close kin that didn't pull the good genes, the ones we would come to call wolves or jackals or coyotes or dingoes, would be left to make their way in the state of nature in which they were born. When humans ourselves left the state of nature, our alliance with dogs might well have been dissolved. If you didn't need a working dog, and fewer and fewer people did, the ledger went out of balance. We kept paying dogs their food and shelter salary, but we got little that was tangible in return. Never mind though, by then we were smitten. Our language reflected how love drunk we'd gotten, the word puppy is thought to have been adapted from the French pape, or doll, an object on which we lavish irrational affection. Our folk stories were populated by dogs, the Africans spoke of Rukuba, the dog who brought us fire, the Welsh told the tale of the faithful hound Gellert, who saved a prince's baby from a wolf. Aristocrats took to including the family dog in family portraits. Wealthy eccentrics took to including dogs in their wills. Today, at least in areas populated by humans, dogs are the planet's most abundant terrestrial carnivore. There are about 900 million of them worldwide, just shy of 80 million of whom live in the U.S. alone. The single species that is the domestic dog, Canis lupus familiaris, has been subdivided into hundreds of breeds, selected for size or temperament, or color or cuteness. 
The average American dog owner spends more than $2,000 a year on food, toys, medical care and more, and some people would be prepared to pay a much higher, much dearer price. When Hurricane Katrina struck New Orleans in 2005, so many people refused to evacuate, without their dogs that Congress passed a law requiring disaster preparedness plans to make accommodations for pets. What's the first thing that happens when you walk into your house after a day at work? You might be tired and ready for a drink, but the greeting from your dog suggests he's been waiting by the door for you all day. Tail wagging, jumping around, slobbery kisses, and the bringing of toys. You look into his happy face and suddenly you don't feel so tired. Where has this bond between humans and dogs come from? And do you know about the disease that changed that developing bond? The disease was rabies, and it had an immense impact. Back to the beginning. There is archaeological evidence dogs were the first animals domesticated by humans more than 30,000 years ago, more than 10,000 years before the domestication of horses and ruminants. This started when wolves began scavenging food scraps from humans, who then began to domesticate the wolves providing them with shelter and protection. In return, the wolves helped the human hunter-gatherers with hunting. As these domesticated wolves were breeding, over one thousands of years they became dogs as we know them today. Alongside evolution of the wolf's physiology, there is evidence of the developing bond between humans and what we now call dogs. At a burial site in Predmosti, Czech Republic, a dog was discovered buried with a bone, believed to be from a mammoth, carefully placed in his mouth after death, it is believed to be 32,000 years old. In Oberkassel, Germany, the skeleton of a disabled dog was buried with the bodies of a man and of a woman, radiocarbon dating puts this at about 14,300 years ago. This is a unique early example of the developing connection, beyond viewing dogs for practical purposes only. Other early dog burial sites were discovered in many other places. The mummified black dog of Tumat in Russia is thought to be 12,450 years old, and in Israel at the Ein Malaha Natufian settlement, there are 12 individuals buried, one with their hand resting on the body of a small puppy, dating back at least 12,000 years. From at least 6,000 years ago dogs were deified, deified in many leading civilizations, Anubis in Egypt, Zolotl for the Mayas, Sybaris for the Greeks. Their role was either to accompany the deceased people to the other world, this stresses the guide role of dogs, or to guard the other world. As dogs were evolving alongside humans, they are able to connect with us on a deeper level than many animals today. And along came the connection between rabies and dogs. Rabies has scared communities for almost 4,000 years, particularly when it was realized that you were certain to die if you were bitten by a rabid animal. People started to put in place rules and punishments aimed at preventing the spread of rabies via dogs. One of the most famous examples are the 4,000-year-old Ashnana, an ancient city in Iraq, laws which state if a dog is mad, and the authorities have brought the fact to the knowledge of its owners, if he does not keep it in, it bites a man, and caused his death, then the owner shall pay two-thirds of a mina, forty shekels, in silver. If it bites a slave and causes his death he shall pay fifteen shekels of silver. In the Bible, dogs had a bad reputation, and were not well loved. Packs of wild dogs were feared and any contact with dog saliva was perceived to be terrible. You had to wash your hands seven times if you were exposed to dog saliva. During the Middle Ages in Europe, regulations for the containment of domestic dogs, to keep them, and you safe, and elimination of stray dogs were passed in many cities and states. Each community had its own way of dealing with the disease, ranging from thorough wound cleansing after being bitten to faith-based cures, placing a hair from the diseased dog into the bite, or wearing a charm to protect you. None of this worked. In the minds of people during these times dogs were both a faithful friend, a working companion, and the carrier of a frightening, deadly disease. Preventing Rabies in Humans Today We've known for decades that vaccinating a dog against rabies turns the dog from a carrier of rabies to a barrier stopping the spread of rabies to humans via dog saliva. But rabies is still a threat to many people. The World Health Organization, who states that rabies occurs in more than 150 countries and territories, despite it being a vaccine-preventable viral disease. 
Currently 99% of rabies cases are in Africa and Asia, but it has almost disappeared in Latin America, with only about 20 cases a year reported. The WHO goes further, saying dogs are the main source of human rabies deaths, contributing up to 99% of all rabies transmissions to humans and rabies elimination is feasible through vaccination of dogs and prevention of dog bites. Vaccination initiatives help reinforce the human-animal bond. A vaccinated dog is more likely to be welcomed into the home as part of the family and is also a reflection of responsible dog ownership. A vaccinated dog can move back to its rightful place, in front of your fire, and back into your life. Beringer Ingelheim is the world's leading provider of veterinary rabies vaccines 1. As part of the Our Making More Health program, we have started a pilot project which aims to raise awareness and knowledge of rabies in Nepal and establish local self-sustaining methodologies and processes. Dogs are so much cooler than people in every single way imaginable. That's not to say that humans are entirely awful, despite the fact that so many just are, but it is to say that even if we tried really, really hard, none of us will ever be as cool as dogs. We will never be as loyal, as beautiful, as sweet, and as loving as a dog. We just aren't equipped to handle li life the way that dogs do, and that's why dogs will all- Давайте, 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 давайте.